First of all, you were the first switch hitting catcher to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. You're only the fourth lefty batting catcher. Obviously, you batted left-handed half the time. And the 16th MLB catcher overall in the Hall uh -huh. of Fame. There's 16 of you now. Can you talk about what it means to just your first impressions that this has happened and you're going to have a plaque in Cooperstown? Well, it's, it's a time right now where I'm still getting used to it. Happened, you know, so recently. It, you know, things have been going so fast that it's kind of all coming at once. But, you know, when I think about the body of work that I left as an active player, um, you know, I have no regrets. I was able to play a long time, avoid injury for almost my entire career, and to, you know, be contemporary with Bench and, you know, uh, Fisk, people like this. Um, and be in the midst of them now as a Hall, of, a Hall of Fame member is a difficult thing to grasp all at once, but I'm trying really hard, and it feels awfully good. Well, you mentioned your durability, and, and some of your numbers there are, are incredible. You're one of only nine catchers who have ever had uh, at least four seasons where you caught 140 games, and you're one of only six catchers who've had two seasons where you caught 150. What was it that allowed you to, be, to, to do that, to have that kind of a stamina, uh, just an incredible record? Well, I, I have to, you know, um, attribute much of that to my former manager at the time, Red Shandings, who was also a Hall of Fame player himself and switch hitter, but he was the manager of the Cardinals during those early years for me, and I was so afraid to to come out of the lineup in fear that I'd never get back in at that time. I was so young, 19, 20 years old, on a team full of, you know, veteran people, uh, that, you know, to come out of the, the game at that point in time, I, I just, just was averse to it, in fear. Um, and then, you know, Red was trying to win as many games as he could, and um, I could hit, and he liked that. And so it was just a matter of going to the ballpark and looking on that lineup and seeing my name in there every day and then realized after about, you know, three and a half months of it and never coming out, <laughs> chances are I was going to be in it the next day. So I guess, you know, the willingness and the fear kept me doing it and the manager kept putting me out there, Red Shandy, so. Was there a pride also in you staying behind the plate? Because you stayed behind the plate for an awful long time in your career. Yes, I mean, when you play catcher, at the major league level, it's by far the most challenging and interesting position on the ball field every night. Now, one could argue that the pitcher has just as much physical demand um, and just as much to think about, but he doesn't tend to have to do it as often, although relief pitchers can get pretty re regular sometimes today. Um, starting pitchers, um, you could argue that on one, any one given night, they could be just, uh, you know, expected to do just as much as the catcher, but night after night, nothing compares um, physically or mentally uh, being back there. And um, the, the challenge and the willingness and um, the desire to do that um, as catcher, uh, it, it's, it's just part of being a catcher. Uh, it's, it's one of the biggest benefits. Did switch hitting help you too, knowing that, hey, you're not going to be neutralized by a certain left-hander, you, you were able to get out there every day? Well, that's clearly the advantage of being a switch hitter. The platoon effect is in your pocket all the time. And that means, you know, that 40 basis points or thereabout is, is uh, you know, uh, in your back pocket as opposed to the pitchers or the oppositions. So uh, switch hitting is the single most advantageous thing uh, an offensive player can have um, because there's nothing like not having to deal with that slider, going breaking you know down and away um, uh, from a left-handed pitcher or a right-handed pitcher. It's the toughest pitch in the world to hit consistently, and uh, switch hitters don't have to deal with it. Did you have a preferred side or a side that you had to work more at? I was naturally a left-handed hitter, and it surprises a lot of people because generally switch hitters are the reverse. They're usually right-handed, switch to left. 
Um, I think that was Mantle's uh, position, and I think it was Eddie Murray's position also. Um, but it was certainly mine as left uh, to um, uh, be my natural side, and I switched right. And until I was about 24 or 25 years old, I didn't feel physically mature right-handed in the way that I did naturally left-handed. And I worked very hard to develop strength and coordination by doing all sorts of things to enhance my non-dominant left hand. Um, and in doing so, when I became physically mature, about 24, 25 years old, it got to the place where it didn't matter anymore. I didn't care who was pitching. Right-handed, I just as apt to hit a homer there as I was left-handed. And um, you know, it, it, it took till about 25 to the p place where I really felt natural either way. And yet, at 22 years old, 21 years old, you're regular in the major leagues, and 22. You go into the 72 season and you don't sign your, your contract. You, 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 I, is, it, is it meaningful for you with what you went through as a player that Marvin Miller is also in this class of people? Did that, did that play a role in your career as it, as it went on? I can't begin to tell you or anyone else the impact that Marvin Miller has had on um, myself and my family. We all know and understand what he's done for Major League Baseball as a whole, the players specifically, and seen this industry evolve in ways that no one even dreamed, and certainly beyond even Marvin's expectations. But Marvin was a profound influence on me uh, and my family. I, I can't also begin to tell you how important it means to me that um, he's finally a member of the Hall of Fame and I'm going in with them. It's, I, I couldn't have handpicked anybody I would have rather gone in with. I want to talk a little bit about the Cardinals teams that you played on in the 70s. You were playing with guys who you probably suspected at the time were going to be Hall of Famers, like Gibson, like Brock, like Torrey. Did you, did you feel that? Did that help you as a player, as a young player, to come into a situation like that with so many, not just veterans, but but star caliber veterans. It was difficult because I was so young. I mean, I first came when I was 19 in September, and then I finally came uh, when Mike Shannon got sick. Torrey was shifted from catcher to third base to fill in for Shannon, and then I was brought up to catch. Um, when I came at that point in time, I was 20 years old, and the nearest age to me was 27, and that was Cardinal. Uh, I mean, that was uh, Carlton. So, I mean, he was nearly a grown man, practically, essentially was, and I was still thinking about, you know, my high school days. <laughs> I was 19, 20 years old, and it was that recent to me. What I learned from being around these people is, one, you were now in the midst of a men's game, and they played at a pace and, and a level that was something that you had to come up to quickly uh, or you were going to get left behind. Seeing Gibson, Carlton, later, you know, playing um, with Brock and, and Torrey and people like this, um, you, you get a real education in everything. And they were all mentors to me. Um, McCarver was there and helped me beyond measure when I first came, as opposed to isolating me or seeing the handwriting on the wall, so to speak. He was very helpful and um, tutored me in many ways. And I'll, I'll always respect him for that because he could see what was happening. I could see what was happening. And um, uh, he handled that very, very well. Was baseball your sport of choice growing up? Is this what you always wanted to be from the time you were 10 years old? There's no getting around that. I mean, I was a baseball player first and, my, and foremost in my mind. I wanted to be a major league baseball player by the time I was old enough to know what that meant. I grew up in Detroit and watched the Tigers, and they're my favorite team, and I watched and listened to them every time I, I got a chance. I played lots of football, had numerous opportunities to play football intercollegiately, Division I, had opportunities to play basketball at Division I, but I knew that if I were drafted out of high school in, in you know, the high rounds, um, and I had a choice to make, um, if all things were equal, I, I wanted to play Major League Baseball.
And you, I heard your comment last night about Al Kaline and what he right. meant to you as a, can you talk a little bit about the inspiration he was to you as a growing up? Well, what is different today than it was back then, but I was 14 years old and the, the Tigers knew all about me, who I was. And there was an old scout back then, his name was Louis D'Annunzio, and he was a, a Tiger Scout. And he knew me from the time I was 12, 13 years old. And, and by the time I was 14, he would arrange on the weekends, okay, for me to go down and take batting practice with the Tigers. I'm 14 years old, and I'm, there's cash. It's freehand. K-line. And I'm 14 years old, and I'm hitting the ball in the upper tank and right field, and they're looking at me and thinking, well, this is pretty interesting, and treating me just like I was one, one of the guys taking batting practice. And after batting practice, took infield, um, <laughs> you know, with all these guys. And so, of course, it's changed today, and those, you know, uh, rules have changed where, you know, you don't have an opportunity to do that with a kid like they did me then. Um, but uh, the impact it had on me, I just, I, f I felt I was already a major leaguer, and they made me feel that way. And I'd hit a, you know, batting practice home run, upper deck and right field, all the originally Briggs Stadium or Navin Field, then Tiger Stadium when I was there. And I, I felt bigger than life. And there was K-Line. K-Line just saw me home. It's the best. <laughs> Is that something you were able to pass on to other players uh, as, you, as you went through your major league career? And, how, and, and was that important to you to, to bring on the next generation? Yeah, you have to pass it along. It's what I was getting at with McCarver a little while ago. I mean, you have a responsibility. This game is so incredible. And it's such a, a beautiful game. And when you learn and understand how it's played and its subtlety, um, you, it's, not, it's not something you can keep for yourself. It's something you have to give. And the joy comes from being insightful and then passing those insights to others and watch the glow on their face you know, present itself. So. Um, you have to pass it on. Has the joy in your post-playing career been the same for you as a GM for the Pirates, as a scout, as a coach? Has, has it come to you in a different way but the same feeling? It's, I, w I tell people when they ask me this, I, 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 um, I can't make the separation. I love them all the same. And I, I really mean that because um, certainly it was a whole lot more interesting and exciting to have been a player and, you know, hit a home run and a grand slam or win a, a big ball game with a, a big base hit. Um, that's all great about being a player, but I was a general manager. I got to see this industry wide open. I saw how big it was. I played for numerous organizations. I've scouted for numerous organizations. And when you start moving around and seeing all the various aspects of this industry, you are privileged and you can't help but love it all. And none any more or less than any of it. Was there, was there a moment in your career uh, that you look back on and say, this is my favorite moment, this is the, the moment that means most to me in retrospect? Seventh game of the World Series is pretty special. 1982, sixth inning, Brewers were ahead, three to one. And I thought, like every little boy, growing up says seventh game of the World Series, I'm gonna win it. And I actually felt that and thought that. And unfortunately, it changed. But most exciting time of my life, seventh game of the World Series, nothing like it. Last one. If you could have one word that you knew was going to be on your plaque, what would it be? Compassionate. In, in a way that, uh, compassionate toward the game, compassionate to your, to your teammates, how, 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 do you, how do you express that? All encompassing. <laughs>